In this video, we'll be looking at the concept of functional groups. So functional groups are a specific arrangement of atoms in a definite bonding pattern. In the organic compound in front of you, you can see that it has the OH bonding pattern, and this is the alcohol functional group. In terms of IUPAC naming, it has a suffix OL, and that's how we indicate that it's present. So this compound actually has the four parts of an IUPAC name. It has the functional group, it has unsaturation, it has parent chain, as well as a substituent. Now you may recall that in numbering a chain so as to indicate where various things are, we usually number the chain so as to give the lowest possible number to possibly substituents, or if there's unsaturation, the lowest possible number to unsaturation. Well now you'll see that we in fact give the lowest possible number to the functional group. The functional group in a sense is the most important thing on a chain or on a ring. So in terms of numbering for this particular chain, it will have been numbered from the right hand side. So the numbers would go like this. So it's a six carbon chain where the functional group is on carbon number two, not carbon number five. So actually given that, the name of this compound is pretty predictable. We have an ethyl group that is an ethyl substituent on carbon number four. We have unsaturation starting on carbon number five, and it's a six carbon chain. So we've got four ethyl, hex, five ene. And then the thing that we're introducing today is that there is this functional group, alcohol. And so we indicate that to say that it indeed is on carbon number two. The locant is two. So that's the OL. Now we'll be doing many more examples of naming organic compounds that include functional groups, but I need to highlight the idea of some definitions of functional groups so that that's clear to you, and also what do these functional groups look like. So in fact, there are two definitions of functional group. A more broad definition, and how it's typically used by an organic chemist, is that a functional group is a specific arrangement of atoms in a definite bonding pattern, but these possess predictable reactivities, as well as defined physical and spectral properties. So we're interested in how the functional group defines the behavior of an organic compound. Definition number two, which is more related to what we're looking at in this activity, relates to the specific arrangement of atoms in a definite bonding pattern that determines the suffix in an IUPAC name. So in a sense, it's all about naming. Now there is overlap between these two definitions. So if we look at the chart that's on the first page of this activity, you see a list of various functional groups. So these functional groups are all functional groups according to the definition number one. That is an arrangement of atoms with a defined bonding pattern that can predict physical properties and reactivity. However, the last two groups are not considered to be functional groups according to definition number two. They do not have suffixes in the IUPAC name. So that's the ether functional group and the halogen functional group. So the way that you indicate that they're present is you use a prefix, and we'll do some examples of that. Many of the other functional groups also have prefixes. We'd like you to know about two of them, and that's the alcohol and the amine. Now, why would these have prefixes as well? Well, as it turns out, you can have more than one functional group in an organic compound. So it'll be the functional group of higher priority that defines the suffix. Now, we've listed these functional groups in this chart in a hierarchical order. So that is the carboxylic acid, ester, amide, aldehyde are all more important than the alcohol and the amine. So you may see some examples where the primary functional group will be the carboxylic acid or the ester, but there'll also be an alcohol or an amine present, in which case you need to use their prefix. Now the other thing that I'd like you to become familiar with as a result of looking at this video is what does the R mean in our designation of the functional group? So we'd like you to be able to recognize various functional groups, but we can't show you all possible examples. So we use the term R to represent various possibilities. But you need to know what R means, and it doesn't always mean the same thing in each of these representations of functional groups. So for the first four functional groups, the R on the left-hand side could either be a carbon, that is a carbon chain, a carbon ring, or it could be a hydrogen. So, for instance, with the carboxylic acid, if that R was a hydrogen, we'd have the simplest carboxylic acid, and that would be formic acid, that's its common name, or methanoic acid, that's its IUPAC name. Going forward, 
you can see on the other side of the functional group, for a carboxylic acid, there's just OH, and it has to be OH. But for the ester, it's C double bond O, O, and then R. Well, that R can only be a carbon. And perhaps that makes sense to you, because if that R was a hydrogen, well, then we'd have a carboxylic acid. So that R has to either be a carbon chain or a carbon ring. In terms of the amide, however, those R's could either be a carbon or a hydrogen. So an amide is defined as having that C double bond O, N, and as long as you have that, then what's attached to the N could either be a carbon or a hydrogen. For the aldehyde, there's not much else to say. There has to be at least one hydrogen attached to that C double bond O in order to have an aldehyde. But for a ketone, both of those R's have to be carbons. If any one of those R's were hydrogen, well, then you would have an aldehyde. So when I say carbons, I mean carbon chain or carbon ring. For the alcohol, the R that's on the left-hand side has to be a carbon. As you might imagine, if it was a hydrogen, well, then we would have water. Now, there's definitely a connection between an alcohol functional group and water in that they're both polar, they can engage in hydrogen bonding. But in order to be an alcohol, we need to have the OH group attached to a carbon chain or a carbon ring. As for amines, if at least one of the R groups is a carbon, we're okay. So let's say the R group on the left-hand side is a carbon. Well, then the other two R groups can either be a carbon or a hydrogen and then we'll have an amine. Now notice there's going to be some confusion between amines and amides. Now one of the things that I do in order to remember that an amide has the C double bond O N is I know that in the name I've got the D and that reminds me, oh yes, amide double bond, yes C double bond O, that's the amide functional group. It's a bit lame, but it helps me remember the distinction. Amine does not have the C double bond O next to the nitrogen. The last two functional groups are the ether and the haloalkane. And of course, the R's in the ether both have to be carbons. If one of them was a hydrogen, well, then we'd have the alcohol functional group. In terms of the haloalkane, I hope it's pretty obvious that the R there has to be a carbon. Otherwise, we would have hydrofluoric acid or hydrogen fluoride molecule, hydrochloric acid, and, or the hydrogen chloride molecule. So that R group has to be a carbon. Now, we will definitely do some practice in our synchronous classes for recognizing and identifying and naming various functional groups. But let's do a little bit of practice right now. So let's look at these first three molecules that are in exercise number one of your course pack. And I'd like you to identify what functional group or functional groups are present in each of these molecules. Once you've done that, figure out, well, what would be the appropriate suffix? So I'm kind of hinting that there's going to be more than one functional group in some of these. So the way that we'll do this is, first of all, you're going to answer the question in relation to molecule A. Now you'll answer the question in relation to molecule B. And finally, you'll answer the question in relation to molecule C. I hope this video has given you some comfort in being able to identify various functional groups. And as I say, we'll do more practice in our synchronous class until you have fully mastered this.